Good morning, everyone. I want to talk about powering progress together through the energy transition, providing more and cleaner energy solutions. Now, the oil business has a couple of challenges. One, with low oil price to stay competitive, but also to see our way through our future existence through this energy transition. I first have to show you a cautionary notice, because we're in the closed period. This basically says, don't invest based on what I'm going to say now. <laughs> but this is about Made in Norway. And Shell has a 100-year history in this country and is very proud of finding and building Troll, of building Draugen, of being in control of Gasnor, of running Knar, of managing the Nahamna gas plant, of managing Ormond Langer, which delivers 20% of the gas to the United Kingdom. It is a, a rich history of made in Norway. But also, Norway is a tremendously important supplier to our global business. And this is the Prelude project being built in Korea for Australia. Floating LNG, 600,000 tonne when fully loaded, 500 meters long, the largest thing man is built that floats. 25 top Norwegian companies providing their technology to this project and many other projects like it around the world. But that's not why we're here. We're talking here about the transitions, the long-lasting changes that are taking place in the energy system. We're talking about having to provide more energy with less CO2. In a world that's growing from 7 to 9 billion people in the middle of this century, there are Norway's population appearing on the planet every 20 days. And over this century, energy demand will double. And how do we deliver that, double that energy for zero CO2 emissions? When we look at this, we have to consider it's not just about what Norway does. It's not just about the OECD. It's not about the high-income countries. 20% of the world's population use 50% of the world's energy. It's the 80% of the world's people that like the services, that like the utilities, that like the mobility that we enjoy, that we're going to have to make sure get clean energy. The 1.1 billion people with access to no electricity, 1 billion with intermittent electricity, and just to epitomize that, Norway is one of the most advanced countries. Two-thirds of your energy is renewable. But yet your CO2 per capita is double the global average. Just gives a sense of the challenges you face, or we all face. But we also need to recognize that not all energy requirements are going to be the same. The pace at which we can decarbonize will be different in different areas. And if we look at those sectors, the four key sectors, power generation, everyone thinks if we can decarbonize power, it'll be fine. 20% of the world's energy is delivered through power, only 20%. So if we put all the wind and solar systems in place, you've only addressed 20%. Okay, 13 gigatons of CO2, a big change, but not where we need to get to. Buildings will be also relatively easy if we can, like power, manage intermittency of renewables. But industry is going to be more difficult. The energy intensity in making steel or cement is such that today we can't do that with renewable power. And I just want to focus on transport, because there's a lot discussed on transport. And we did a scenario. We looked at this century and how we get to a zero emission world. And we looked at the various sectors. Clearly, passenger car transport, yeah, we can do it. Electric vehicles are here. They can grow. Actually, freight, lorries we can see how a large part of that, on a global level, can be decarbonized. But aeroplanes, ships, I think are going to be more difficult in this scenario, and it be much more resilient to that change. This is a 100-year, well, 85-year look forward. If we look forward 25 years, which is kind of, yeah, well, it's kind of tomorrow, really, in terms of the fleet and, and the total change that will happen in the world, we'll have about 90 million barrels a day of oil demand today. What happens in 2040? Well, we think, actually, for passenger cars, it'll go down, despite having double the number of cars on the, on the planet. Why? Well, partly because of electric vehicles. In this scenario, which is a base scenario, we have 170 million electric vehicles in 2040. 
10% of the world's fleet. Energy efficiency in cars is going to be important, more important than the actual energy vehicle impact. But where we are concerned, or where we do believe there will be persistent oil demand, is in freight, is in shipping, is in air transport, with the world growing at 3 to 4% a year, where it is much more difficult to decarbonize these sources. And with the other sources, we can see a world where actually oil demand might increase. Now, that sounds like an excuse for an oil company. It's not. It's just a reality. So if we look at this scenario of where we think the energy system will change, 1%, 1% of the world's energy comes from solar and, 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 and wind at the moment. We think that can grow to over 40% in this century. We think, at the same time, that fossil fuels will go from 80%, but still we persistent, for the reasons I outlined, to around 25%. We will need CCS to get to a zero emission world. Now, what Shell does, Shell will be in oil and gas as a core part of our, our business for decades to come. We have to make it more energy efficient. We have to progress through to gas. That's why BG was a transformation for us in our, in our combination with BG. But then going forward, we've got a new energies business. We've just won a wind tender in the Netherlands, the Borsella 700 megawatt plant. We have a solar business emerging, a big one gigawatt plant being built in Oman, in our oil business there. Biofuels, we're one of the biggest biofuels producer in Brazil with Kaizen Joint Venture. And in hydrogen, we're going to build some 400 retail sites in Germany over the next years. We are making small steps into this, but still it's small compared to the big oil and gas business. But what is crucial for us is carbon capture and storage. And Norway is a real leader here. Norway, through Sleipner, through Snovit, through what they do in TCM, is a real leader. And Shell has also launched a number of CCS projects. But it goes too slowly. Shell's keen to participate in the full-scale plant that's been planned here in Norway. But CCS has to accelerate for us to get to that zero emission world. So lastly, it's about governance. It's about thought leadership. Shell, as a company, will do its part. Will do its part to progress through more gas to replace coal. Will do its part in developing new energies, in promoting CCS, in making its own business more fuel efficient but we do need the right regulation. We do need governments like the Norwegian government, which is very advanced in putting a proper CO2 price in place. We will need cities to be designed in the right way. We will need partnership between companies like Shell, between governments and new emerging companies. If we can do that, if we can work in partnership, I think we can make a sustainable future. So let's make the future.